Midnight, one more night without sleeping. Well, it's undoubtedly the hottest day of the year, so I've got to keep it down a bit because all the neighbours are in the back garden. There's an old piano and they play it hot behind the green door. <laughs> Sorry. Occasionally, I receive an email off a company saying, uh, we've got this product and we wondered if you'd uh, like to have it and use it for your channel, you know, and uh, help promote us and then you get the benefit of whatever we're going to give you. And this can be really exciting because this so seldom happens, this kind of thing. So I look into it a bit deeper and they say, yeah, we've got these sunglasses. So I kind of think, I can't really do anything with sunglasses, can I? You know, it's not exactly a tool to be used on a car, so thanks, but no thanks. What about a tablet? That's not really going to work, is it? Mobile phone case? No. How about some carpet cleaner? How about some in-car entertainment? Well, a new stereo would be nice, but not really do that kind of thing. A set of steak knives in a presentation box? No. Cuddly toy? How about a nice gas barbecue for you and your family? No. What about a CNC plasma cutter that can cut many different materials at different thicknesses and can be programmed in minutes to cut any shape that you want? <laughs> Ooh, okay. So here's the machine. It's just rocked up and I couldn't wait to show you it. It certainly looks the business, doesn't it? And it's incredibly rigid. I can't believe how rigid it is. There's no movement in it whatsoever and I think this is mostly down to the four millimeter frame that it's made out of which uh, is braced and uh, yeah it's incredibly strong and there's like I say there's no movement in it whatsoever this model is the four by two model so this will take a four foot by two foot sheet on the bed so yeah there'll be a tray under here water tray which catches the sparks from the plasma cutter and the steel sits above that and then it cuts it all up any shape you want i'm going to show you obviously it up and running when it is up and running but it isn't for now i've just got it into the corner of my workshop this isn't where it will be living for sure because i like to try and keep this clear as possible because i'm going to have other projects going on obviously the plan is to get it into the back room because my garage is split into two rooms. I'll just show you the other room quickly. So we're in the back room of my garage and this was the wall I was kind of thinking that it could have gone along originally. Uh, but I got the tape measure out and my room in the back is 10 by 12 feet. So my bench is incredibly wide. I made a very, very wide workbench for a very good reason i won't go into that now but what it means is i could actually put the plasma cutter up against this wall and have loads and loads of space along this wall uh, especially if i did away with that shelving and moved plenty of stuff around the problem if i do this is for me is because of the width of the bench and it's not a huge room it means that the plasma cutter will be sat there and it'll leave me quite restricted uh, with space to use the vice and stuff like that so I was in a bit of a quandary as to what to do actually and then I got the tape measure out and started thinking outside of the box and I cannot believe it where that compressor is sat now I got the tape measure out and that machine will fit along there lengthways so with the compressor moved and that shelving moved the CNC machine will just sit in there nicely and uh, only come out as far as this vice so i'll move the vice obviously and the cnc machine will end there and what that will mean is i've still got a nice wide walkway around everything albeit things moved up this way but i mean i've cleared a space now anyway for where i wanted it to go so i'll basically move everything out of that corner and put it into that corner reroute things move things around and find out some of the storage options because I have got a lot of stuff that I need to store but I don't use it very often and I have actually got space in the roof of the garage which a lot of this stuff could go in as well so there's lots of options available another consideration that somebody might make with something like this uh, dependent on their usage I mean if you only used it once every six months 
and then you bashed a load of components out or something and then you knew you weren't going to use it for another six months so you could actually take it down the whole machine takes down in about an hour and about an hour to put back together again so you could leave the computer side of things set up with the plugs in the wall uh, take the machine down it would store into a very very small space because obviously each component takes down to its own size and yeah that's another consideration i probably won't do this myself it'd be nice just to leave it in that back room set up then when i want to use it i can just just do something on it no problem so a little bit more about the company rob from extreme got in touch with me a few months ago said he'd like to meet up and have a chat and discuss things see if it would be something that i would sort of be interested in doing and could i actually make use of it so i popped down to the company and i do mean literally Pop down just seven miles from where I live, which was quite incredible, really. So I popped down and I met the team, family team, because it's a family run business, and saw all the equipment and the machinery that he's got there. Because not only does he build these machines, he also does machining, machining work in his machine shop. So had a good look around there, had a good look around at all the tools and machinery he uses for making all the parts and components for the. CNC machine he buys a little in actually I was surprised by how much he did actually fabricate himself folds up all the bed himself uh, CNC cuts all the bracketry and he's even got a powder coating oven and uh, room for doing the powder coating uh, yeah absolutely incredible he even does the electronics so yeah he custom makes all the electronics so that his own unique CNC machine can be run off the uh, computer software so they have to program their own electronics it's all modular like this uh, like you know because it's electronics things do go wrong that's, that's life but we can just swap out a part and yeah. you're up and running the next day it's not like you're waiting for parts or if the customer's desperate we'll send them out a whole new box yeah and you just plug it back in and you're up and running once we'd finished the guided tour of his factory then took me off to another business uh, another business Artec because he actually uses Artec plasma cutters on the machine and that's the one that I'll be running on mine. He does do other plasma cutters as well. So we went over to there because he's got a CNC machine already set up over there. And he gave me the basic overview tutorial on how the machine works and how, how to program it. I was absolutely blown away by how simple it was. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I'd be able to program it easily myself. Not a problem at all. Um, I'm, I'm gonna get some more training off him as well so that he can show me all the features it does because he's got lots and lots of different software for doing lots of different things. I mean, you can just input uh, an image that you get off the internet in it and it'll just copy that. You know, you can overlay it. Um, I was very surprised by all the different processes and programs it does. Uh, something else that it does is it does nesting so it's something completely new to me I mean it's all new territory to me I don't know anything about this kind of thing but I'm learning fast but yeah the nesting program where you could say make a couple of different brackets two different sizes and say you wanted to cut out 20 of each out of a big sheet then you literally just input the two different brackets in and then press a button, press a nesting button, and then it will, you know, formulate how these two brackets could be fitted closest together across the sheet so you got the most amount of brackets out of the sheet. And the machine would know where it was getting hot, so it would sort of do a little bit of one bracket and then shoot to the other side of the sheet, do another little bit of another bracket, and so so on and so on and uh, yeah just just keep the temperature down on the actual place where you're cutting it from it's doing it all automatically you don't have to think about any of this kind of thing you just you just click repeat and then it will make up that that program it was just uh, I was just blown away by how simplistic it all was really so just give you a few facts and figures on the machine and what it can do so the plasma cutter itself if you were doing uh, what's called a severance cut, which means you were doing it uh, handheld, it'd probably do about a 20 mil thickness uh, plate, but because it's gotta do a piercing cut, so 
uh, because you can start right in the middle of a, a sheet of material, it will actually cut straight through from the centre. You haven't got to start from the edge, which of course is what it's all about really. So the actual machine, this machine I've got, will do a maximum cut thickness of around about 12 millimetres on steel. Um, and probably around about half that on, uh, on non-ferrous materials. And the thickness will go right down to about 0.5, no problem at all. He offers an upgrade as well. So the smallest machine is two foot by two foot, I believe. And I don't mean the machine's two foot by two foot, it'll take a two foot by two foot piece of material. And um, if you wanted to upgrade it then to a two by four. So if you weren't happy with a two by two and you thought, you know what, I want it a little bit bigger, I want it four by two, which is the machine I've got, then Around a couple of hundred pounds would buy you all the extra pieces you would need to just build it up. What he says is, just look on his website and the upgrade will cost you the difference between the next size up, if you know what I'm saying. So if it's around about 200 pounds for the next size up, then that's roughly what it's going to cost you to upgrade it to the next size up. It's uh, the smallest machine is two foot by two foot. I got the four foot by two foot. You can get four foot by four foot and eight by four as well. And he's actually working on a prototype machine at the moment that's gonna be 10 by five. But this is only a prototype and not available at this very moment. But of course you could be watching this in a few months time and it may already be available. So go and check the website out and find out what I was really taken aback by was the neatness of the cut. I really didn't expect it to be as neat as it is. I really thought that you probably have to do a lot of cleaning up, but the pieces he showed me were, certainly if you're gonna weld those brackets to something, then that was already good enough. You could just take it straight out of the machine and use that bracket as it was. Really very little deburring to do. Before I wrap this video up, there are a few important things I'd like to say. And most importantly, I'd like to say a huge thanks to Rob from Extreme for considering me when he gave me this piece of equipment. I'm really made up um, and it really, really does mean a hell of a lot to me. I'd like to also add that this isn't a paid promotion. This piece of equipment has been given to me so that I can use it on my channel, show it being used and I can use it to make equipment that I'm going to use to make equipment that's going to shape panel work, which is my area really. I'm not going to be doing the same kind of thing as Urchfab, although I will use it for making up brackets and things for future products, no doubt about it. And it would have been an amazing piece of equipment to have, wouldn't it? Uh, when I made all those brackets up for my van, the engine mountings and everything else, that would have saved me weeks and weeks of labour. So I'm not really going to be doing any reviews on this equipment, I'm just going to show you guys me using it and how fantastic it is and what I can achieve with it. Um, bit pointless doing a review really because nothing really to compare it against. Um, Rob was explaining to me about this piece of equipment and there's a massive step up when you step up in accuracy. So this bit of kit is going to suit 90% of applications. If it wasn't quite up to what you wanted, then the step up is absolutely enormous. Probably just the cost of the plasma cutter alone would cost more than this piece of equipment in its entirety. And if you wanted a full setup, then it would cost you many, many more times then this piece of setup would cost you know many more times. So it really is in a league of its own with regards to build quality and price. If you'd like to see a video of it being used right now, you can always go and see Urchfab's channel or Double Boost's channel. Uh, Matt from Urchfab, of course, one of my favorite YouTube channels I've plugged in before. And John does a great channel, the Double Boost. I find his videos enormously helpful with the Artec TIG welders because we've got the Artec welder at work. I'm trying to get one at home as well. I'm uh, just trying to save the money and now I'm going to get one of those. And um, yeah, great channels. I'm going to stick a link in the video description to both of those channels. 
My van really is so close to being finished now, I can almost taste it. So with the van out of the way, I can make the changes in my workshop that are necessary. So I either use this in the main workshop or in the back room. Preferably in the back room because I'd like to leave this void open for a new project. <laughs> I'm not seeing any more. So anyway, I think I've covered everything. It's been a great, it's been a great thing this has, hasn't it? I'm really chuffed. And uh, I can say so many exciting things to look forward to. So I'm gonna say, bye for now.